weighted average cost of capital. In this session, we're going to estimate the cost of capital. It consists of equity funding cost and debt funding cost. And then we weight those two based on the capital structure of the company. The combined cost is the weighted average cost of capital, which is the cost of funding the assets of the company. Let's look at a breakdown of how this works. Let's take the weighted average cost of capital for a company and break it down into its various components. The first distinction is separating the weighted average cost of capital into the cost of equity and the cost of debt. And you can see, as the representation here shows, that they will be weighted depending on how much of the company's capital consists of equity and how much of the company's capital consists of debt. Let's start on the equity side. We're going to begin by taking the risk-free rate. The risk-free rate is typically a 10-year government bond. It's considered to be risk-free because if the government were in a position to default, it could technically print the money and therefore not default and is hence risk-free. Next, we're going to add to that the beta of the stock multiplied by the equity risk premium in that country. So, for example, we would look back at two years of the stock price volatility on a weekly basis. We would take the volatility of return and determine what the beta is. Suppose the beta was 1, that means the company has the same volatility as the market. And we would multiply 1 by the equity risk premium, let's say it's in the United States, and the equity risk premium there is 6%. Then it would be 1 times 6. If the beta were 2, meaning twice as volatile as the market, it would be 2 times 6, which is 12%. You would take that and add it to the risk-free rate, suppose that's 2%, then you would have your total cost of equity. On the debt side of things, it's a little simpler. You can take the average yield on the debt of the company and then multiply it by 1 minus the tax rate because there is the tax deductibility of interest, but there is no tax deductibility of anything on the equity side. If the company doesn't have public debt, or any debt that has an observable yield, you can look at a similar company that you believe would have a similar credit rating and assess their cost of debt. So we get the cost of debt after tax. We then multiply the cost of equity by the proportion of capital that's equity, and we multiply the cost of debt by the proportion of capital that's debt. And at the end, we get the weighted average cost of capital for the company. Let's work through a couple examples of calculating firms' weighted average cost of capital. As a refresher, the WAC formula is equal to the cost of equity multiplied by the proportion of capital that's in equity plus the cost of debt after tax multiplied by the proportion of capital coming from debt. So the cost of equity is equal to the risk-free rate plus the beta times the market risk premium. Equity is valued as being the proportion of equity capital relative to the total capital of the business, and the debt is the same thing, the proportion of debt relative to the total capital. And then the after-tax cost of debt is the yield of debt multiplied by 1 minus the tax rate. So here's our formula as a refresher. So here's the information you've been provided for Internet Co. And we want you to calculate the cost of equity. The risk-free rate is 5%. The market risk premium is 4%. And the beta is 2.38. Calculate the equity return required by shareholders of Internet Co. Please try this on your own and we'll show you the example. So here's a breakdown of the solution. We're going to break this down into simple steps, showing the required rate of return. It's the risk-free rate plus the beta times the market risk premium. The risk-free rate is 5, the beta is 2.38, the premium is 4%. We multiply that out, we get 9.52% on the equity premium side and 5% on the risk-free rate. 
so the cost of equity for Internet Co. is 14.52%. Now that we've seen how to calculate the cost of equity, let's move on to another example where we'll calculate the weighted average cost of capital. So consider a different company, Brick and Mortar Co. It has a cost of debt of 10%, cost of equity of 15%, a 30% tax rate, 10 million of debt, and 40 million of equity. So, what is the WAC for Brick and Mortar Co.? Please try this on your own and then look at the example solution. We're going to break down the WAC calculation into four steps here. The first step is to fill in all the numbers where we need the proportion of equity and the cost of equity plus the proportion of debt and the after-tax cost of debt. So here are all the numbers that go in our equation. That breaks down to be an 80% equity structure at 15% cost and a 20% debt structure at 7% after-tax cost. We can combine that to be 12% on the equity side and 1.4% on the debt side after weighting them. And combining that to get 13.4% weighted average cost of capital for Brick and Mortar Co.